Well, hello ever again, everybody. My name is Brian Brettschneider. I am with the National Weather Service Alaska region, and we're gonna do another extended outlook segment. Uh, we just got in some new information from the Climate Prediction Center and some other um, national, international um, agencies and, and organizations. And so we're gonna go through how we've done so far this month and how things are looking in the upcoming winter season. All right, well, first, you know, we're, the days are getting a lot shorter and it's extremely noticeable that sunrises are later, sunsets are earlier. Um, and even here up on, we gotta figure out how to do this again, up on the North Slope, um, they have reached the point of no daylight anymore. Now, of course, it still gets twilight in the middle of the night, or the, I'm sorry, the middle of the day, uh, but they have no official sunrise again uh, up in Upyagvik uh, until January 23rd. So, um, here in Anchorage, we are about, we have another hour and 17 minutes of daylight to lose. And up in Fairbanks, almost another two hours. So we've, we've lost most of the daylight we're going to, um, and, we, and we're 30 days away. So from this point for the next 60 days, every day we'll have less daylight than today. Okay, so what does that mean? Now I've showed these maps in the past, they look pretty similar now, but this shows the amount of daylight and this 24 hours of no daylight, zero hour line uh, for today and the zero line for a month from now, you know, it, it dives a little bit further south, but probably not gonna be too terribly noticeable the amount of daylight we're gonna lose between now and the winter solstice. All right, so how have we done so far this month? Well, it depends on where you're at, but overall, most places are about, well, on average, about three degrees warmer than normal. Uh, for the November 1st through November 20th period. Um, here in South Central, we are in a little blue bubble and most of the rest of the state is in some shade of yellow, orange, or even this dark red. Um, so north of the Arctic Circle, uh, away from the coast, uh, it's been quite a bit warmer than normal. I mean, that, this, this is all more than six degrees above normal. And a lot of these places, it's more than 10 degrees above normal month to date. And don't expect a lot of changes, but stand by for that. Okay, how are we doing for precipitation? Well, for the first 10 months of the year, statewide, we're in first place. Um, we're on pace to set a wettest year, full year on record. Uh, the previous record was set only two years ago, and I did a computation at the end of October that we would need about 82% of normal for the November, December time period uh, to break that record. Well, guess where we're at so far? We're 81% of normal. So, you know, there, there's still a lot of time left between now and the end of the year, but it's not unlikely that we're gonna have our wettest full year on record here in Alaska. All right, so how are we doing on sea ice? Not terrible, but not great for, this is our last 20 years average, which as a reminder, the last 20 years have had a lot less ice than previous decades and centuries and millennia. But just looking at the last 20 years, uh, we're doing okay. Beaufort Sea is fully frozen. Can't get higher than, than fully frozen, right? 100%. Chuck Cheese actually uh, about 115%. So normally uh, there's not much ice here, uh, say between you know Point Lay and, and the, uh, the western tip of, uh, eastern tip of Siberia, but we're doing a little better in through here right now this year. And for the uh, Bering Sea, normally we have 52,000 square kilometers, and now we've got 80, I'm sorry, 73,000 square kilometers. So we have a, just a little bit more here in Norton Sound than is, is typical of the last uh, 20 years or so. All right, so let's take this incrementally. So. Your, uh, your point and click forecast, you go to weather.gov, that's gonna get you the next seven days of forecasts. Beyond that, we look to the Climate Prediction Center. And this is the first step beyond that. This is what we call week two or, or days eight through 14. And if you like uh, warm, melty, sloppy uh, winters, um, winter conditions, I have good news for you, okay? Every place, except for Southeast is in some shade of orange or red. High confidence that we're gonna be warmer than normal for the last few days of November 
and the first few days of December. Just a lot of, uh, these, this has been changing a lot day to day, the, the, the orientation of these, but the big picture of warmer than normal, that's been pretty consistent for a while now. Okay, and how about precipitation for the same period, this week two period? Um, we're getting an indication that we could get some wetter conditions in the southern half of the mainland, um, particularly focused the farther southwest you go. Again, a lot of uncertainty on this. Remember, we, we, we've been running really wet for the year, not so much for the month or so. I kind of think this is overdone on wetness, but I could be wrong. Um, but as it stands now, it's looking a little bit wetter than normal. And, and if we are below freezing, that's snow. But if you remember, a lot of red on this map. So I expect a fair amount of the precipitation this period to fall, unfortunately, uh, in the liquid form. All right. Yes, just yesterday, November 20th, the Climate Prediction Center came out with their monthly outlook for the month of December. Now remember, climate outlooks are fundamentally different than the climate models are fundamentally different than weather models. Okay, so there's a lot of teleconnections and statistics and trends, a lot of things in here that you don't see in your, you know, your day seven or even your week two forecasts. But this looks like very, very much of a La Nina forecast. So we'll talk about La Nina coming up. But a classic La Nina signal is cold the farther south and east you go and warmer the farther north and west you go. Although this is warmer than what we typically find in a La Nina December. Although historically La Ninas are colder the later you get into the winter season compared to normal. So like January, February are more likely to be below normal than November, December. Okay, so warm in the west, cooler in southeast and near normal in the middle. And this map looks, the precipitation version looks almost exactly the, the same, except we replaced our below normal temperatures with below normal precipitation, and we replaced our below above normal temperatures with above normal precipitation. As always, precipitation outlooks have a lot more uncertainty. So the error bars are a lot larger on these. Sometimes they work out pretty good. More times than not, they don't. We do, it's better than nothing. It's better than a roll of the dice. It's better than a guess, but not a lot of skill on these still here, even in 2025. All right, so now let's look at some um, international or national and international consortiums that put together mo weather models from different weather models and kind of throw them all in the basket together and see what comes out. So this is the NMME, North American Multi-Model Ensemble. And this is for the month of December. Now this is, this is published on November 8th, I believe. So it has early data. So it's, got, it's, a, it's forecasting a little bit farther out than what the Climate Prediction Center is. And has this classic, classic La Nina signal of cool in Western North America coming up into Alaska and then warmer the farther west you go. The most classic situation is to have this offset a little bit farther to the north and west, but still it's a very, very, what we call canonical La Nina looking map. Okay, this, so, so then this, again, North America multi-model ensemble. So this has computer models from North American, from NASA, from, National Center for Environmental Prediction within the US from the Canadians. Okay, so it's got North American constituent components. This is the European constituent and it has some, um, so it has the Europeans, the UK, the French, uh, here's the Canadians, uh, Germans, actually has ours, Japanese. Okay, so it's more of a global, uh, not just European, more of a global. And it, it looks about the same in terms of the patterns, but the magnitudes are all bumped up on the warmer side. So you don't see any blues for below normal. Um, so it has all of Alaska, this is again for the month of December, in this warmer than normal category, uh, and more so the farther northwest you go, and less so the farther south and east you go. Okay, so that was just December. Now let's look at 
uh, December, January, February, the core winter months, the, the boreal winter. Okay, this is again the North American multimodal ensemble. And now this looks very much more classically La Nina, where we got those, that blue is shifting more to the Northwest. So about half of Alaska, or more than half, is in some shade of blue. So below normal, the 1991 to 2020 normal, extending down to Western Canada, and then most of the lower 48 uh, above normal. And then this is the, again, the, the, um, what we call the 3CS. This is, this is put together by the Europeans, but again, it's got all, pretty much all the, the major global weather forecasting uh, agencies included. And it finally has a little bit of blue here for below normal uh, for most of Southeast Alaska, coming all the way about to Anchorage, and then more areas around that that are near normal, but still it's, it's hanging on to this above normal along the North Slope and the West, uh, the Bering Sea coast. So again, pretty much the same pattern, but just everything is bumped up a little bit in terms of temperatures. And here we go. Here's our official outlook from our Climate Prediction Center. And it looks like exactly what it looked like the month before and pretty much what you would expect a La Nina winter to look like. And again, we'll get into La Nina in a minute. Um, so below normal for all of Southeast running, you know, here about Eagle down to Anchorage and the Kenai and then um, above normal from you know, the, the Kuskokwim Delta all the way up to your to Kaktovik and every place north and west of there. And some of this, a lot of this is statistical in terms of it, the trends. The December, January, February period has warmed faster than any other three month period um, for Alaska. And so trends are part of the, um, uh, the, the formula. It's one of the ingredients that goes into these. Precipitation, again, it looks almost the same. Dry in southeast, wet along the west coast. Um, not exactly a canonical La Nina, but based on what we think the flow pattern is going to be, this is the where it's going to bring in those warm temperatures along the west. It's also going to bring in moisture that goes along with it. Okay, so now let's talk about La Nina. And on November 13th, the, the uh, Climate Prediction Center issued their latest uh, INSO advisory and, or INSO uh, forecast, and they continued the La Nina advisory. So this is two months in a row for an advisory. Um, there is no warning. So you either have nothing, a watch, or an advisory. Um, and so that's what we have, a La Nina advisory. So in the central, tropical central Pacific, the sea surface temperature has been more than 5.5 degrees Celsius below normal. Um, that's now had that for a couple of months now. And it is expected to continue through the December, January, February period. So um, we do these in three month increments. So October, November, December, there's an 85 or so percent chance of La Nina for November, December, January, just under 70%. And for December, January, February, just over 50%. Technically, to, to qualify for a La Nina, you need five consecutive of these to be uh, at or below five, half a degree Celsius below normal. This would be number five. So technically we would actually make it um, if we did this. And the way these are computed in the future with a centered climatology will definitely make it. But in real time, it's always a question. And you don't want to have, actually wait till here to issue a La Nina advisory when you might actually have La Nina conditions for months before that. So as soon as they think it's going to happen, they pull the trigger and issue an advisory. And for the most part, the atmosphere is behaving in a La Nina fashion. OK, so what I did is I, I pulled together uh, just the last 25 years. How have La Nina temp La Nina's done? This is, this is a typo here. This should say 11. So 11 of the winters of the last 25 winters have actually had uh, a La Nina condition in December, January, and February. And on average, it has been cooler than normal along the southern part of the mainland and even here a little bit in the west. Not a lot, right? So it's, it's um, 0 0.5 degrees to 1.5 degrees on average for those 11 
La Nina's. And I'm using a detrended climatology, so it's, it's accounting for the fact that we're, we're getting warmer across that period. So not a very strong signal for temperatures. Um, but if you look at snowfall, um, of these 11, I got it right here, 11, our snowfall departure for the entire season when our December, January, February is in the La Nina condition, um, pretty much everyone gets more snow than normal. This is kind of a good sign if you like snow. And if you don't like snow, there's something wrong with you. I'm just kidding. But you should like snow if you don't. Um, and there's a couple reasons for this. One is it's generally colder, and that means less rain in the winter where rain might occur. But also when it's a little bit colder, it, it's a little bit more thermodynamically favorable to have fluffier snow. And so it can just kind of pile up a little bit more than it would if it was uh, warmer, wetter snow. Um, so again, if you like snow, La Nina winters are your friend. In some of these areas over here, all 11 of these La Nina winters have had above normal snowfall. So um, especially down here in the lower Bethel area, the lower YK Delta, or more the, the lower K Delta. Um, so, uh, so snow favored in La Nina winters. Okay, that's what I've got this time for the um, extended outlook. And I hope to see you again in another month. If you have any questions, uh, drop a comment down there. And if you haven't liked and subscribed to this page, uh, do so now so you can get notifications on when we're going to put together, put out our next videos. All right. Thanks, everyone. And we will see you next time.